Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to Stretford Paddock. I am Adam McCullough. This is your morning Manchester United news. We've got plenty to get stuck into today. Obviously, Manchester United beat Sheffield United yesterday at Bramall Lane to get a crucial, crucial three points. Of course, we had the sad news about Sir Bobby Charlton as well. Um, as we learned that Sir Bobby Charlton had passed away yesterday. And we've also got news on who could potentially be coming in um, with the new co-owners of Manchester United. Um, in that 25% deal with Ineos, we could see Paul Mitchell arrive and we'll get more on that as well in this video. Make sure you're keeping it locked, you're liking, commenting, sharing and of course subscribing to the channel as well. We've got plenty coming up for you this week. We've obviously got that Copenhagen game and then the Manchester Derby next weekend as well. So we'll be action packed throughout the week with daily content. Make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. But as I said, Yesterday, United played Sheffield United. We beat Sheffield United. But that news was almost uh, insignificant. Um, you know, when you heard the news coming through before that, that Sir Bobby Charlton had passed away. Now, obviously, we've already paid our respects on the channel. But I haven't had a chance to speak about what Sir Bobby Charlton really meant to me on the channel yet. And in this video, I'll do that. Because Sir Bobby Charlton was someone that you always expected to associate with Manchester United. You just always expected to associate with Manchester United. You always expected him to be around. You always expect him to be in that director's box watching Manchester United at, at Old Trafford. And obviously I was one of those people that never got to see Sir Bobby Charlton play football um, as, a, as, a, as, a, as I grew up in the 90s and I watched Manchester United in the 90s. I wasn't old enough to see Sir Bobby Charlton play. But you hear about him, you know about his legend, you hear about all the stories. Obviously, as a Manchester United fan who was one of those geeky Manchester United fans that just researched everything, watched every video I could about the club. So Bobby Charlton was someone that I learned about an awful lot and I spent a lot of time reading about and watching videos of. And he was just an absolute icon. I think the word legend is, is, is so overused in sport these days and in just in general. But so Bobby Charlton was a legend an absolute legend there's no doubt in that and when you look at him surviving the munich air disaster you know winning the fa cup winning the league winning the european cup part of the first english team to win the european cup in 1968 obviously winning that world cup which stands alone as england's only trophy as well and being a big major part of that team that won the world cup as well um ballon d'or did i mention that the only englishman to win the ballon d'or champions league and the world cup um, the United goal scoring record, the England goal scoring record, just absolutely phenomenal. And not only was he a great goal scorer, he scored great goals too. Um, Sir Bobby Charlton, man, what a legend. And the football world will miss him. We will miss him um, because he was an absolute legend and absolutely gutted um, at that news. And um, thoughts, condolences, well wishes to his family, his friends. Um, real, real sad news coming through about Sir Bobby Charlton. What an absolute legend. And if you're a younger United fan that has never really, you know, looked up his story and stuff, then go and do it. Then go and do it. Um, because it's it's a great story. Could be a movie. You know what I mean? Absolutely incredible stuff. Um, Sir Bobby Charlton, rest in peace. Um, and condolences and well wishes to his family and friends. Such sad news coming through yesterday. Thankfully, we got a win. Um, as well, which was nice. Uh, we needed to get that win, um, and it was nice to get a win on that day, um, you know, for his family and all that kind of thing. But yeah, football is insignificant on days like that. Moving on, um, we have to move on. Obviously, Manchester United won yesterday. Diogo Delo with a fantastic goal to win the game. Don't think the performance was anything to write home about, but when you look at the makeshift defence that we had and all those kind of things, um, I suppose... You know, let's just, yeah, fine. Um, you know, it was it's, it's a result that you want. You just want to get the result, don't you, after the international break, especially with those difficult games coming up. Copenhagen, Manchester City, etc. need to get a result in them. So, let's have a look at this news regarding Phil Mitchell or Paul Mitchell or whatever his name is. Um, former Southampton executive is in line to become the new Manchester United Sporting Director. New uh, Ineos billionaire Sir Jim Ratcliffe is keen to bring in a sporting director once his deal to acquire 25% of Man United is agreed. Mitch is available, having left Monaco in April when the club's president, Dmitry Ribelevyev, decided on a change of direction. 
He was a former player at Wigan and MK Dons, um, among others, was overlooked for the Liverpool Sporting Director role last season. He was spoken to the club before they decided on a more short-term appointment um, of German Jörg Schmatt. I think I've said that right. He has worked at MK Dons Tottenham and more recently at RB Leipzig. I think he was at Southampton um, as well. Eric Tenag has made clear his wishes to keep his control over player transfers. Currently, both he and the club's recruitment have a veto over signing anyone. The Glazers have always resisted handling, uh, handing power at the club to a sporting director of any profile. The former chief executive, Ed Woodward, was heavily involved in signing players. How well did that work? And Woodward's key transfer aide, Matt Judge, has also left the club. Um, with the re responsibility for recruitment falling on John Myrtle said, but it looks like um, he could be coming to Manchester United with Ratcliffe and Dave Brailsford and Ineos and all those people. So that one is interesting to say the least. So Paul Mitchell could be swooping in at Manchester United. Um, anything else popping up in the news? Um, obviously, it's all going to be dominated by the Sababi Chart and stuff. Um, let's read a tribute out. Uh, obviously as well uh, David Beckham was talking about it he said it all began with Sir Bobby Sir Bobby was the reason I had the opportunity to play for Manchester United I will be forever grateful to a man I was named after his middle name if you're wondering uh, someone I looked up to and was a hero to many around the world not just in Manchester and our country where he won the World Cup a true gentleman family man and truly a national hero today isn't just a sad day for United in England it's a sad day for football and everything that Sir Bobby represented our thoughts go out to Lady Norma, their daughters and grandchildren. Rest in peace, Sir Bobby. Today, our hearts are heavy. That was David Beckham's tribute um, to Sir Bobby Charlton. Obviously, someone he spoke about in his documentary as well. His father spoke about, obviously, watching Best Lauren Charlton and naming David Beckham, David Robert Beckham, after Sir Bobby Charlton. Um, but yeah, such sad news, man. As I said, someone you always expect to be sat in the dugout, uh, not in the dugout, in the director's box. At Old Trafford and, uh, yeah, got in news, got in news. But, yeah, let us know your thoughts. Let us know your memories on, of Sir Bobby Charlton in the comments below. Uh, make sure you're liking this video as well. We'll be back very, very soon with much, much more on Stretford Paddock. Keep it locked. Until then, I've been Adam McCullough. I'm out of it.